And how did that make you feel? And was the marriage? I very like Catholicism. I was Irish Catholic before then, so um, it, was a, it was not much of a change. So how, how do you see Jesus? Who, who, who do you see him as? I don't see, I'm not religious, so I don't want to talk about religion really. You don't want to talk yeah. about religion? I see him as a prophet, I presume. We are, yes, uh, correct, but what I, what I would say to hasten that process is that that is what he said of himself in the New Testament. He doesn't go around the streets of Galilee or Jerusalem exclaiming that he is, yeah, that he is God. Rather, he addresses himself as a prophet. Mark chapter six, verse four, Matthew twenty-one, eleven. So this is a misnomer of history, just like how Irish people have been traditionally stigmatized here in these countries. Unfortunately, same thing, misunderstanding about Christ has taken place. He always claimed to be a prophet of God, a messenger, but never being God. Hence, when we read verses in the New Testament, like John 17, 3, where Christ says, for this is eternal life, that they may know you as the only true God and whom you have sent, the messenger Jesus Christ. So hence, what we say therefore, yeah, what we say therefore is that when we invite people to Islam, is to recognize your creator, a supreme being who is unlike his creation. It's just like the Alcoholics Anonymous do. Well, yeah, I mean, there's always hope for the Alcoholics they Anonymous as well. Believe in, uh, believe in a higher force. But uh, I mean, as I say, I'm not religious, so kind of, I, I came from a very religious family, actually. So uh, my mother was very religious, my, my sisters, my nieces. And I understand it as a, as a community, I guess, uh, people want to belong to a community and sometimes it helps, sometimes it really doesn't help, really, really doesn't, especially when there's mass beliefs, because often there are mass psychosis. You know, I believe there's a, there's a very easy formula, there's a very easy f formulation of a potentiality of a coexistence amongst everyone that we acknowledge who our creator is. So the Islamic paradigm... Everybody's not going to do that because... They're not. Yeah. Everybody's got different beliefs and we yeah. still have to acknowledge each other's existence. Absolutely. You know? but, but within those beliefs, normally you would look at the major tenets of what those faiths espouse. So, I've read a bit of the... Most people don't, don't know what the tenets of their beliefs are. They, they, they rely on leaders yes. and leaders often mislead them. Yes, I, I agree. Mean, that's the I agree totally with what you're saying. Yeah, because to get to be a leader, one has to be a path. Often, it's not, a, they don't have to be, but, it, but often supreme narcissists who believe, really only believe in themselves and want to be the love of Probably more fireworks than you've ever had in Ireland. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, uh, it's supposed to be a little bit of a sarcastic joke, but never mind. <laughs> okay, so yeah, Northern Ireland. Yeah. So um, yeah, so I mean, again, as as people have believed, what we essentially say is that there is a creator, a singular being, unlike his creation. So in our paradigm, God is not a man, woman, idol, statue, and that amazingly, if you look at all the world's religions. That's what they essentially espouse as well. However, what happens? Third party narratives within these religious scriptures, then they associate their major protagonists as being deified. Whereas the Islamic paradigm is clear and it's uncorrupted. It tells us very clearly, one God, unlike his creation, we're all going to pop our clogs one day. We're all going to pop our clogs one day, as they say, and we're going to be accountable for our actions. Hence, we need to be thinking about our hereafter. We're all going to be perishing one day. We're all going to be perishing one day, but I think we all should, should be accountable for our actions. Precisely, now, yes. You know, not, not because we fear, we fear our, our, the, the final judgment, but because we ought to have, I guess, God inside, that, that like our superego, that, that tells us what's right or wrong. So what? And, 
So what we say, God gives you an inner disposition of the Creator, but God is not intrinsic within us. He's a Creator, He knows everything that we do. He's closer to us in every capacity than we can imagine. But God is not within us in a literal sense. So we're very careful not to um, give analogies to God akin to His creation. So a Creator who is beyond the creation, an independent being, who is the creator of the heavens and the earth, that is the one we will return to. Those who mock it don't seem to realize we're here ourselves miraculously. And that same creator will re, um, bring us back to life after having this opportunity now to do what we can and then we will have eternal bliss or on the opposite side, not too clever events will occur. Just because we don't understand how we got here doesn't mean it was a miracle. But you would say if the universe came into existence, then something supernatural has happened, which then necessitates, by definition, that it would be a miracle. Well, I don't understand lots and lots and lots and lots of things. I don't understand how a flower grows. Some people do. Some people do understand how the universe came into existence. Or at least they think they have an understanding about it. And we all have different understandings. Think with, think the analogy of the flower is some people can tell you affirmatively how the flower grows. Yes. Whereas the universe, it's generally understood to have had a beginning. So what I've tried to make you think momentarily, if the universe had a beginning, some supernatural event made it happen. Don't you think I have thought of that already? I, I'm sure you have. I would like your response. So why do you think you're making me think of it now? Or why do you think you're trying to make me think of that? That's something that possibly everybody thinks about at some moment in their life. Fabulous. So, it's, it's... so what we then say, you look at the process of elimination. Did the universe create it? Why do you it? think it is worth your while talking to me now, trying trying to convert me, or not convert me, but tell me your beliefs when I am... I think you're probably better off talking to somebody else. Never say never. You've got a very pleasant personality. Never say never. God is most most merciful, even up to the moment that one perishes. So, yeah, listen. It's, it's a bit like uh, um, Christian beliefs. There are so many factions. It's just incredible. I mean, I, my, my lovely next door neighbour is Jehovah's Witness. She believes that everybody is going to come take, get condemned to death for eternally, eternally, just because they're not Jehovah's. So we and don't believe that, we don't say I that. Know, but it's like, no, we're all just trying to get on in the world. But no, we don't say that. To live a good life. Yeah, that's something that we don't say, however. We say once the truth is presented to you, then if you ignore that truth, you have every opportunity up until your death to accept that truth. Why do you think they... Why do you think they kill women in Iran for not wearing a headscarf? That's not acceptable. I mean, They're it's, not the, it's that's crazy. Not, that's it's not the tenets crazy. Of, that's not the tenets of Islam. Yeah. Well, that's not the tenets of Islam. It's and big, Iran is not representative of Islam. Iran does not represent Islam. It's the same as... as no, they're not. There are, there it's, it's the same as saying Ireland is not representative of Catholicism or... But, but what... Yeah, yeah. Yes, it is in lots of ways. You've got to take it on. But, I mean... It's an Islamic Republic. Yes, well, supposedly, but it's not actually. But Because by definition, the majority of the world's Muslims are Sunni Muslims. 90%. The Shia are in Iran, they only make up about 5% of the Muslims. I mean, they're only 5%. I, uh, when, when I did the conversion to Islam, now, I was sitting here as an, as an ex-Irish Catholic. The, the, yeah, the mullah spent all his time not trying to convert me from Christianity, but trying to, to uh, knock Sunni Muslims compared to Shia in the same way as Catholics do it to Protestants. You know, it's just ridiculous. Really, yeah, I, I understand. Yeah. And there is that analogy with Islam as well. I agree with what you're saying. However, what we're, see we're, we're going to the, ch to the heart of the matter. The heart of the matter is this. There is one God 
who is unlike his creation. God is the one supreme being. We should worship that God alone. So the Prophet Muhammad, upon whom be peace, just God's messenger. Christ, just God's messenger. Moses, just God's messenger. So we don't make creation akin to the Creator. That's, that's, that's the difference. Just, that's just historical. I mean, Christians, Jews, and 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 Muslims all believe in one God. Presumably yes. The same God. Yeah. Presumably the same God. Lots of other people don't believe that. They believe in multiple gods, which is probably a kind of you know. Bit far, a bit far off the mark. I don't believe in one God. I don't believe that. I think that is a very dangerous belief, actually. And I think that's what makes religion dangerous, is that belief in one God. Why? Because there's never only one. There's good and bad. There's men and women. There's good and evil. You know, the, 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 there's always, always more than one. And if we think there's only one way, it leads to... When you, I mean, when we, when you say there's more than one, we would say by definition there can only be the one yes, central yes. being. Why? Because if there's a multiplicity of different creators or gods, you're, then you're made up of a multiplicity of cells. Yeah. You're made up of a multiplicity of organs. You're, you know, the, a city is made up of a multiplicity of people and beliefs and creativity and and craft and work. You know, and hard. And, you know, manual work and labour and uh, art and science, multiplicities all around. Yes, but even multiplicity comes from singularity as well. Just, I, just want, I just want to repeat that slowly. So just say for example, we're all... We're let's, say it's, let's say a cell, a single cell. Yes. Okay, you know, it's a very primitive thing, isn't it? Uh, 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 you know, a single cell divides and divides and divides and becomes an amoeba. To make humans, we need to... We didn't start as one, we started as two. But that single cell, at which you may have not... And then divide. These two, do. These two unite and divide. But that single cell, which you may have not observed while you made the comment, is a singularity initially. So hence, it's singular. It's not multiple at that stage. At that very stage, it's not. It's a very primitive singularity. Yeah, but all it does, it, it proposes that the just say in a huge amount of um, huge amount of cells, but it, it would come from a singular cell. Hence, the understanding of plurality as the origination would make no sense. Just think about that momentarily. But I'm going to the crux of the matter, which is a one creator. And then God sends, and then God creates in a vast way. But that one being must by definition be independent. And there cannot be two independent entities as such, you see. Then for example, today's lukewarm, cold, uh, coldish autumn day. You can't say it's 40 degrees, burning with sun, and we're wearing shorts and t-shirts. So we've got to be definitive. And hence, what we therefore say is that even you may have not even inadvertently you, you, you made mention of the single cell and then what comes as a result of that cell, but the thing is it was singular. And hence, that is what we say about our creator, a singular being, unlike his creation. Not a man, not a woman, not an idol, not a statue. Does that make sense? It doesn't make sense. Well, it, I mean, it, it makes sense. If you, like, lots of things don't make sense to me. I don't, I accept it. I accept them. I accept that that's what people believe. I don't accept that it's... Okay, I mean, like I said, our, our arguments would be an independent... Be an independent be... For example, for example, I have been heartbroken about this, what happened last week, absolutely heartbroken, because I want to believe that, that Palestine is always on the side of good, and that, that, you know, that Israel are evil, and all of these, you know, it doesn't work. We've all got these things inside. It's... Well, we really appreciate you attending as well, and putting, coming out on a Saturday afternoon, 
to give uh, an acknowledgement of the suffering of these innocent people. Thank you so much. Appreciate yeah, your time. Thank you. So we had a very pleasant discussion with a nice yes. lady as yeah. well, and um, you know we, we learned some of the opinions of the people and um, looking at Islam to some capacity. It's very noisy, as you can imagine. So it's a bit of a mouth. It's a bit of a task speaking. Um, but alhamdulillah, we're, we're you know in in with this demonstration. People of all different walks, lives, building up a crescendo of understanding that the evil that people commit is not going to go unchecked. People know what's going on and we can see it developing. People of different nationalities carrying the Palestinian flag. I wonder what our Zionist friends in Israel are thinking about this. This is the support you're getting in Western Europe. Understand this point. What, what is Zionism is all about? How it affects the Englishman even? How it affects the average Joe? What are their plots and plans? It's all there in Islamic eschatology. You know, women today think that they are, are, are being liberated in the society, they live, but they're not. All they're doing is a figure of sexualization. And, or, but, and men, for example, suffering in matrimonial affairs, but they can't see their children as a result of the policies that have been inculcated by this Zionistic system that we're living in. A, a system which is contrary to our Creator and contrary to God. And I think more and more people are realizing this. Thus, people like Suella Braverman are not so brave, can we just say. She's just um, doing actions which have been propelled to her and, and, propose, and proposed to her. And hence, um, she's making um, uh, you know, protests like this illegal. I mean, it's absolutely madness. Um, so these are things that people are standing up for. And um, you know, the officials and the governmental, I mean, even me saying this is a danger to myself. So if, even if I was speaking about this, you know, they could easily frame you and corner you. And this is what the police do regularly as well. The people who have, who have had issues with the police, how they bend things around. So um, I would strongly recommend and suggest to people that um, they continue with these protests, make people aware that the tragedy taking place in Palestine is something which is incomprehensible beyond human uh, um, uh, understanding this, that such actions can happen and I think this is really coming all over the world and this needs to carry on it simply can't be like the previous protests of a year or two or five ten years ago this has to be relentless so we need to make people aware the government's aware this is not going to be acceptable and they're going to ignore us frankly they're going to ignore us they're simply going to go ahead and carry on with their bombardment because they've got other vested interests but the people are awakening i think and this is very important and everyone has to take a little bit of a you know a risk sometimes me even speaking about this issue this could be a problem for me but you never know how the system works you see if you speak against the system it will come down on, upon you so this is something that we just have to speak about it's the truth so may um, Allah guide this uh, particular young man who I spoke to. And we and, carry um, on. So we like bliss. And we carry on. Well done, Ryan. Ryan, our friend here, who appears in many videos, made an excellent point. We carry on until we make them listen. Let's see if they will listen. Um, some people will say it's somewhat doubtful, but you know there, there is an inkling now that they're feeling the pressure. Hence, they're trying to ban these protests. May Allah guide us all. Assalamu alaikum.